let me see if I can get it quieter in here. This little mic is pretty sensitive. What was that? Uh, I was thinking, <laughs> welcome to a bitter and resentful bastard's vlog. <laughs> Or he lists all of his problems for you, for you to ingest. I, I, <laughs> I had another vlog that sort of became like that. It was uh, me and some other physicists and shit arguing back and forth about, you know, stuff. And uh, it, uh, it just became like, an, so I try not to do that anyway. Uh, Let me see here. Um, I'll probably talk a little bit about some mixing stuff and uh, what else? I'm just getting up, having myself a cup of redneck high tea, Mountain Dew, piping hot tea, pour the two together. You can't go wrong. <laughs> Get it at your market now. Um, Oh, yeah, I laid some groceries in. I went about uh, nine or ten days without really eating. I'll tell you what. <laughs> My advice to you, eat something occasionally. You feel better. <laughs> it's like the world's most obvious advice vlog. But, yeah, I was feeling just real kind of... I got, got a lot of work done, but, I, you know, I just kind of go... I still do a lot. I, I, I did a couple of songs like three or four songs yesterday and uh the day before and uh i really don't remember which ones i sit in front of the computer with a chord chart uh the original song and the lyrics and logic pro and put it all into that and uh put it i drop everything in logic pro where i can refer to the original you know for me i don't know uh the gestalt is something they use in art a lot, and it's, uh, the, the gist of it is, uh, did you ever see, like, a, a picture somebody did of apples? And by the way, this is probably boring as hell unless you're sort of following me or something. It's, it's <laughs> liable to go on for f five minutes or 50 minutes and might go everywhere or absolutely nowhere. So if you're just tuning in, I'll give you that, you know courtesy there's plenty of cat videos and shit <laughs> on YouTube but uh, yeah you know I do the same thing that they do in art you know like you see a picture sometimes and I'm not any good at all at drawing uh, I could be but I don't want to focus on it because I'd get obsessed uh, but uh, the gestalt is pretty you know I use it a lot it's a technique and it's also uh, sort of a lot of stuff that I like to do is from a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain that I've been able to apply. I read that like 20, 30 years ago and I've been able to apply that to my life. Basically it's stepping back and seeing something in an overall pattern uh, and uh, the importance of that and uh, that's just been key in every area of my life to stand back and go well, you know uh this may be a great house, for instance, but I owe, you know, twice what it's worth on it, and it's falling apart, you know, instead of, you know, hanging on real hard to the house or whatever, uh, you know, get the overall view of, like, well, in, in any situation, you know what I mean, obvious stuff, but, uh, yeah, it, so, you know, that's, a, it, there's videos on YouTube, actually, drawing on the right side of the brain, uh, where she explains it, it's pretty good. They 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 focus it at art, but they talk about the gestalt, and that is getting the overall impression of like getting really capturing what some something is. I'll probably go outside. It's getting warm in here already. Uh, and uh, you know, once I get the gestalt, if you will, of a song, the framework, the chords and stuff and then listen to the original sort of the the meaning of it like i did a cover of uh when the levee breaks and i i've known and a lot of it's kind of almost cheating because i've known these songs by heart for 
many, many, many years. And uh, then after not hearing them a while, when I come back, I, I heard that and I go, oh, this is a, a, you know, this is an epic. All of Zeppelin stuff is like an epic tale, you know. And uh, anyway, yeah, that just helps me to sort of get the overall, and, and that, the gestalt, the, the core, the spirit, the soul of the thing. And then after that, it doesn't matter how, like with art, you know, they represent it by modern, postmodern, you know, uh, classic, uh, Victorian, who knows what kind of art, you know. But as long as it's still a man, you know, sitting on a bench alone, uh, it doesn't really, the finer points can be represented in a lot of different ways. So anyway, I like to do that, like kind of, I just ask myself a lot. And a lot of people think I, you know, do pretty good at it. I, obviously some people don't, uh, but, uh, um, the, uh, You know, getting that overall and not obsessing on the fine details at first, just making broad strokes. You know, I like to work that way a lot. For anybody doing art or any kind of pursuit in life, man, you know, there's been so many times where I was like, well, I'm not going to get started because I'm afraid I can't do this great or because I'm afraid I'll do it really, really great. You know, it's like there's all kinds of stuff, but what's been key for me is to just do it I have one friend uh, and this person has been having problems with uh, wants to do music pretty really good singer and good good guitar player you know and uh, this person wants to do music and record it but has been sort of fooling around with computer problems for uh, months now without doing anything really and any music at all and I started out there too the computer I used was actually in pieces uh, on the floor here and when I decided I was going to do music again I, I just said you know well when I put my mind to something I'm like well this is now my job 24 7 relentlessly 365 like the Terminator it don't stop until I get you know results <laughs> the Terminator I am the Terminator music right I'll be back. Um, but uh, just doing it, you know, I, I made it my job to fix the damn computer, which took about four weeks ordering parts and stuff. And I was real close. I found it in a pile of parts. No way to diagnose it without another computer. And uh, the diagnostic, it's a Mac Pro. The diagnostic lights weren't working. I just had to do a bunch of sort of field tests and go, well, I won't be able to really eat this month, but I'm going to buy this video card in, in the wild hope that it's the video card, because the rest of it seems to be functioning. And it turned out I was right, luckily. Although I put like several, about seven days, you know, diagnosing it in, because it was a real leap for me, you know. Um, and I had torn it all apart. I was this close to pouring a dang, you know, Jack and Coke in the damn thing. <laughs> I really was. I was going to just pour whatever I was drinking in there and nuke it. But, uh, uh, for, uh, for Violet, my friend, she's, uh, she's really, really something. Uh, let's see. What did I want to say? Oh, lo siento, amiga, yo. Yo dormir or dormiendo, yo dormir, uh, para muchas horas, uh, yo no, no voy a guardar, um, y si es la verdad, estoy aquí para todo el tiempo, todo, uh, siempre yo aquí, y es, uh, no problema. Part of me. Yo gusta to photographs, pictures. Gracias. Yo gusta. Lo siento para malo español. Yo tu. Yo aprendo italiano en un día, pero no este día. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, yeah, she gets uh, 
and I have, I'm kind of just getting up. I have pretty good Spanish sometimes. Once I get into the groove, it takes me about an hour, then I'm pretty good, uh, you know. But uh, she's Italian, and uh, she really likes my vlogs. Has been, she writes me all the time. It's real cool. She's a good friend, real faithful, good friend. Sends me pictures. I said, well, if you're going to write me every day, send me a picture every time so I can sort of see. Oh, man, beautiful, beautiful place she lives. It's like heaven there. But, uh, yeah, I'll talk, you know, about, I may go outside. Mm. This is the year, as the Chinese say, my colors turned. <laughs> my beard went gray and shit. I had cancer in 09. And, uh, spent a lot of time. I'm going to kind of make a... It's still unclear, I think, to a lot of people, like, the, the stuff I've been through and, and, you know, how it's really, this is a an odd thing that's happening here that I'm doing. And uh, I'm going to have to make a list because I, I thought yesterday, oh, I've never even mentioned that this, and these are, like, not little things that, that happen. It's, like, these horrendous, epic things that have happened. And uh, when you put them all together, it's, like, you know, it, it's it's a neat story, you know, my story, and uh, if it wasn't worth a damn, I wouldn't be telling it. Oh, I got to keep Howl going, but uh, yeah, this is the first year I'm officially gray bearded and kind of feeling a little pokey and old. Uh, okay, that's good enough, man. Uh, this camera is kind of hard to angle. I love this camera. It's a Kodak PlaySport, the latest one, X5. I think I paid 69 or 89 bucks for it, but you can drop it in water. It's just an amazing unit. Tough, you know, whatever. It really is one of those great things they make that I'm sure they'll quit making because I just love it so much, you know. I went to the store finally with food, but I love certain things. And uh, they, every time that happens to me, it's like this food, and I'll use the word again, I do it some quite a bit, actually, because I try to make the songs that I do, you know, sublime. <laughs> Other covers I do, try to add something to them. Sometimes, you know, it's pretty good. Other times, not so much, you know. It's just, most stuff doesn't totally suck, but when you get to a certain level, but uh, it... Uh, it, it isn't everything it could be either some of it some of it like there's four or five of them that are really really good uh, there's a playlist uh, on the the site this file is housed on uh, go to the feature page and there's all kinds of play stuff in a playlist there I've done and all in the last uh, really few months you know but yeah I got some food and oh that's one of the things I love these sunflower seeds and they quit making uh, these are good they're good for you they're a good food you know but now all they make is this this honey roasted deal which are excellent by the way I was sometimes things change and you go hey this is real good but I like the salted ones too but last time I was there at Walmart they quit making the they quit getting them or something you know every time I find something that's just magical and epic and it works totally they quit making it <laughs> you know can't trust companies either <laughs> But uh, I'll probably go take the trash out. It looks like it's getting dark. I just sit when I work. I don't let anything bother me. I uh, have uh, I toss everything towards the damn door and then pick it up later. Uh, I would show you guys what I'm doing with Hal here, but I I use some commercial software, but I also wrote some and. I didn't finish the shell totally, or the, the interface, graphics and stuff, so uh, anybody could look at it and go, oh, he did that in this language with this thing, and you know, in this way, and copy it, and I'm going to probably sell that and uh, make some intellectual property money on it when all this is done. YouTube has changed their policies in the last... Uh, the, Hal tells me all, and they do all the time. I mean, they're just free to do whatever they like. Um, but uh, as far as uh, 
you know, how you can do things and how things are done. And I see they've changed their, they're always changing their interface. Sometimes it's an improvement, but I think they need to think harder about some things. Um, you know, one thing they really need to do is make it when you block somebody. I think one thing would be really helpful when you block somebody, they're, uh, you have the ability or the option to make them disappear from your searches and your radar totally and your you disappear from them i had totally you know because the whole i'm not going to say too much about the thumbs deal it's obviously very very flawed but it promotes commerce that's the reason they leave it you know when they're selling advertising they can say the thumbs probably cause the, the thumbs down even i'm talking about If they didn't cause commerce, they wouldn't leave them there, you know. From and uh, so, you know, when you're selling an ad, you can go, well, this page, these pages, these type of pages get so many billions of hits a day, or you know, or millions a day. But uh, I, uh, I won't say too much about it because there's all kinds of techniques to do it, but. Uh, and somebody, a couple people asked me about mixing. A couple people asked me about uh, tracking people down on the internet and in life, which both things I've actually uh, done professionally. And, and I'm not, I don't track down, you know, too many people. But a lot of stuff is, there's another email. Let me see. Oh man, it's from my brother and them guys. They got a, some kind of oil deal going and they're all contracts and shit and something I'm particularly good at. He's like revising a contract and I scanned it. That's something I'm really good at and got good at in business because it allows you to kind of go, let me push politely. You can sort of push what's impolite in, in conversation and contract. I can go, well, let me see if I can get an extra you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollars out of this deal by just being a, you know, a, a dick. Basically, they call it aggressive in contract language. But uh, it, uh, it's kind of. I don't want to get into it. And they don't have any idea, you know, that I'm actually. I scanned what he's talking about. It's all still at the bullshit level till till uh, till it gets. I'll let them. I've let them duke it out with this contract for months now. Or, and uh, without, and I'm not interested. I could give a shit less, but it's also still at the bullshit stage. When it gets to a point where there's a check presented to me, that's in a contract. Usually, the point where you go, okay, now this is serious enough to warrant my attention, and I insist upon blah 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 blah. blah if anything, for that. But uh, you know, a lot of stuff's comparative. I found out one person. Uh, I had my site has three coming up on three thousand thumbs up. I was looking at analytics the other night, and all this, a lot of stuff's comparative. All this information is publicly available if you just put it together and compare. And I use spreadsheets and stuff sometimes, but I was looking at analytics, and on one day, one person, and I'm not even going to say the country, uh, out of 100, I have to, coming up on 3,000 thumbs up and 120 thumbs down. And on one day, one person with multiple accounts gave me 21 of those thumbs down. And, uh, you know, it, uh, basically the way that I do stuff, uh, so that told me the country where it came from and a lot of stuff's elimination. So somebody asked me about, it. I'll talk a little bit about it and then get into some mixing stuff. But, uh, you know, so I knew the country it came from. So that eliminated billions of other hits that brought it down to, a, you know, a million or so. But then also with these sends I do, friend requests, I could look at the same date and time and see, well, who did I contact in this country, you know? And uh, then sort of that narrowed it down to like, you know, a hundred. And then, well, who uh, also was, uh, you know, uh, like that. It's just comparing stuff and pretty soon, you know, uh, who also was active let's see what are all the parameters i have it all in in modules so anyway like that it, and i can and do sometimes use other harder to, to glean publicly available information like who came through in this country and, and lots of time time with computers is so fascinating things you know uh 
anything that happens on my site, I'm instantly email a, a change. You can get, and that's free software too, like Firefox. And if a page is updated, it'll automatically instantly tell you. And so I get a timestamp of when things were changed on my site via email. And I kind of set this up on purpose with uh, a thing that says so and so is subscribed to you, and with other deals with analytics saying, well, this happened at this exact date and time. Uh, so I have you know several emails in a row right there at the exact moment that all these thumbs down appeared. So I, I can glean the username and then finding their you know name, address, and driver's license. Right. <laughs> I don't pay much attention to it, but in this case, this is the first time in 30 years I'm using my real name. So somebody with that kind of veracity to log in and out of six accounts, which I put tracers on all six, of course. <laughs> um, it, uh, it sort of suggests they might actually want to do you some harm and they might have known you or just you know, it suggests it's personal and it turns out it was. You don't want to know who some of the haters are because it's the same as in real life. It's people that uh, have, you know, kind of pretending to be your friends but secretly sabotaging every single thing you can do. So anyway, that's all on that. Um, but a lot of stuff's comparative and uh, just to cap that off, a lot of things happen on computers. You can boil it down to pretty much the question of who in this microsecond at what IP address was active at this connection at this time. And even with everybody in the world in that microsecond, that might boil it down to one, two or three and on this subnet and this mask and see what I mean? So that's how a lot of it's done. A lot of real life, like tracking and computer forensics is done that way by time. Who, where, when, what, why, and how. The why doesn't matter as well, kinda, motive. But anyway, yeah, you know, uh, let me get this list of going out. I'm, oh, shut up. What? Oh, karma. Bang my damn head. Uh. But uh, in physics and in, in sound, I'll talk about sound a little bit because a lot of people have asked me about stuff. And if you're an engineer, producer, the, you know, you might be curious. But I, I use a thing called compression, and uh, everybody does. That's what gives your, your music, your sounds, that final sort of professional sheen, you know. Man, there's some kids out here. So it's indispensable and it's built into a lot of the latest sequencers. Both compression is... I can't see over there. Oh, there's that lady. I never really befriended her too much. She's real bad off and I don't bother her. She don't bother me. But, uh... Um... Basically, if you take, uh getting kind of nippy out I've got to pick up the trash let's see how dark this will be oh, just on the cuff for being too damn dark I don't even know what day it is I think I heard the garbage truck this morning which means I missed it, it means it's Friday um, get in there get in there ha! <laughs> you can imagine when I was younger we as a cowboy and I was actually a cowboy uh, uh, we were blowing shit up and burning stuff and uh, you know just wreaking havoc on the world man shooting and we had high powered weapons everything you can imagine you know occasionally Man, it's cold. It's getting nippy. But uh, with compression, it basically averages like vocals, uh, any any instrument, anything. Every sound has a frequency, an amplitude, and a waveform. The amplitude is how loud it is. And compression basically goes through and averages its. Uh, uh, and it's a detailed subject. I mean, it averages the volume, and that gives your sound 
that does more than that. It's not an effect. It's sort of a utilitarian thing, but it's the thing I use the most that's most responsible, and all great engineers do. Not saying that I'm great. I learned from a lot of great guys. Uh, man, it's whipping out here. Wind. But, uh, so here's the thing with that. If you think about, let's say you got a screaming guitar, and there's some grating... There's, and this is the pay dirt on this. You can use compression like EQ, all right? And we're about ready to hit pay dirt. It took me a lot of years to get this. Normally I don't toss those. There were so many here at one time. Uh, oh, now it's too dark. But there were so many at the doorway of my RV where I'd parked cigarette butts that uh, the landlord complained. I mean, there was like a good foot high mountain of them, you know. I'm a dedicated smoker. Love it. Stupid as hell. Don't start if you don't. It, it helps me with a rare neurological disease. I have two more emails. A couple more people subscribed. <coughs> Looks like my brother's... Oh, man. Well, no, I'll fix it. Uh, these little tripods, this thing turned out to be a big piece of garbage. That was only like six bucks, what do you expect? But without that, this camera would be use, uh, useless. Um, but uh, I'm going to start hell sending out this batch. Um, and then I'll go on. So it, compression, it's so, it's indispensable. You can use it like EQ. And the way that works is if you think think about it, every, like a guitar, guitar tone, for instance, I've been doing a lot of guitar work lately. Um, it, uh, it's made up, let's say it has a grating tone in it. Um, you can open it up and compression at two to one, two decibels of sound go in and one comes out, but you can, uh, that's called the ratio. You can up that ratio at 10 to one, limiting begins, where it's used a lot in mastering. But let's say at four to one, four decibels go in, one come out, you have a tone going along, and it's got some jagged edges on it, you can pinch that with compression where it takes the grating tone off of it, the grating part of the sound off of it. Uh, however, you still, the, here's the pay dirt. You can use compression like EQ because, and all, all the, the, the great sounding records you've heard do this, because it allows you to use the full bandwidth of the sound and have it controlled. So, um, in other words, you still get to keep that screaming high end that you lo you so love, as I certainly do, but it's under control now. You know, it's not, I mean, if you think about it, let's say it's at usually between 5 and 8K, something screaming like that. Sometimes, you know, 2, 4, 2 and 8, uh, but uh, if, you know, uh, it, that particular with EQ you're upping the amplitude of that or cutting the amplitude of that the volume of that signal so with compression what it does it even though you've used no EQ it compresses uh, that the amplitude of all signals in that one signal I'm not being very clear I'm not you're only as good as a scientist or engineer as you are at explaining stuff and one of the ways I explain stuff is to show people what I can do you know the music and, and other stuff sometimes math and crap like that but I mean uh, that's sort of my way of getting results I guess I would be saying but uh, anyway the bottom line is there's built-in uh, compressors and with built-in settings so if you don't really know much about it go into your logic pro some guys have it or whatever doesn't matter and pick a compressor and it'll have settings that say guitar bass especially on the low end frequent sound has I may step outside for a minute again but sound has undertones and overtones resultant harmonics 
so there's never a sound really in nature that's absolute that's why it's so weird to hear keyboard boards and certain tone generators you never actually hear a sound that is exactly 1k it has some resultant under and overtones on it and uh, it uh, um, controlling those especially in low end because it's it's it takes more amplitude a bass guitar has to be much much louder to be perceived equally in volume in the real world and electronically as a lead guitar you have to and so your bass guitar eats up a lot more energy in your mix how do you reclaim that energy compress the bass signal and you can reclaim all of that amplitude energy it was using uh, and and the resultant harmonics a bass but it also has going through your entire mix screwing it up but if you compress it it controls the undertones which will eat your entire mix up and the overtones so get into it you know I mean it's the kind of thing where it's so detailed in audio engineering when I was uh, a producer and particularly at A&M Records we had what what are called Fairchild limiters, leveling amps. They're old school tube compressors, and every time our limiters actually uh, ten to one. Although you can anyway, they're tube compression limiter tools, rare. And uh, every time I'd go in there, I'd send the assistants around. I go go collect all on day one. I'd be the step one, collect all the Fairchilds because I use them across stereo buses on drums, I use them across the stereo bus, which is a bold statement, because they sound so great, but those things are, it's such a detailed sport that, uh, uh, where am I at time-wise? Oh man, I'm already way in. I'll finish that on that, I'm 31 in. Um, it's such a detailed sport that uh, I was going to buy a house one time. It happened to be from another mastering engineer, and we both knew and respected each other, knew each other's work. And he said, "Yeah, my cousin's brother, sister's aunt, or whatever, wants me to teach her kid about recording and stuff." And I said, "And he goes, you know, we were talking in the yard before we closed the deal, and he was like, he had a neat studio, by the way, up, uh, and." Uh, he said, what am I supposed to do, you know, I could, we could spend two years, you know, sort of glossing over a lot of stuff about compression and limiting and then another few years on EQ and so it's like that. I mean, those, those Fairchilds go for, I think, they were like 12 to 15 grand in that era in the 90s and I read somewhere they're 30 and 40 thousand dollars now. So anyway, it's such a cherished thing amongst engineers and so indispensable, but that's, I would choose it over on a desert island. I would probably choose compression over EQ uh, as a tool to mix with if you're going to be mixing a record on a desert island. But uh, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, some people, a lot of people had talk, uh, sent me emails and stuff, and young engineers, even seasoned engineers, I look at, I keep and try to keep an open mind anyway about everything, you know, and learn from, uh, even the, the most kind of beginning amateur, I learn a ton from, you know, by just sort of going, well, what, by seeing how other people see things, which is kind of what all this is about, too. I'm sort of doing all these covers to show you or to show people in general how I've experienced these things, you know. But anyway, if you want to sound professional in your recordings or just singing or whatever, it's all in the compression. And uh, I use it. I, you must have, but you can't overuse it. It's an art to use it a little bit in all this stuff. The key EQ compression effects, right when you start to hear it working, make it work a little too much, make it work a little, you know, not quite enough. There's one, I used to think there were a lot of possible settings. Now I, I realize there's only one setting for thousands of settings in any mix I do. There's only one, like, best magic sort of setting, and the rest are just be pretty good, but not magical, you know. And hopefully, sometimes I get magical, other times it's just pretty good, you know, like everybody else. But uh, anyway... Yeah, it uh, it's a whole deal, but I, I wanted to make a vlog. 
even uh, este este es para tu Violet yo tengo pregunta para ti es ayuda para tu cuando yo hablo en español para ti uh, para mi o todos no comprendo uh, que yo dijo esta solamente para tu si sí. este es porque um, escriba mío muchos <laughs> uh, I just said uh, be sure and write me a lot um, anyway I think I'm all good you know just I said I would make a vlog faithfully when I started doing this and part of being a grown up is doing another email doing what you say you're gonna do when you say you're gonna do it now he's he's really on this tangent and some um spamming me uh anyway let's see ending <laughs> i hate these longer cigarettes they're buck a pack i couldn't afford to smoke otherwise uh are i'm gonna end I'm trying to figure out the right ending i'll do i'll do poltergeist i like that one but i've been talking it should be like, this house is compressed.